Hey everyone, you guys have been asking and so I shall deliver. You wanna know my personal rig? Well, let's finally take a look. So here it is, it's my personal machine that I've built up over time. I've tweaked things, I've changed things, I've added things, I've removed things. Um, one nice thing about building your own PC is you have the freedom to upgrade individual pieces as time goes on. Or if you can't afford everything you want right away, then you can add them later on. And if something then gets out of date slightly, you can just take that part out and put something new in. So um, you'll kind of be able to tell some of that as we go over all of the parts that are in my personal rig that I use for all my content creation, when I stream, and for all my games. So this is my personal rig I use for all of those things. Um, I have some other computers too, but this is my main machine I use every day when I'm doing any of those tasks. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go over what is inside it exactly so you know um, what it is. I'll let you know what I think about that specific part. Um, I'll let you know the prices of it too. We're gonna look at everything and see how it all adds up as well if you're looking for maybe a really powerful machine or a pretty powerful machine for you know streaming and content creation um, or just you know wanna play games. So we're gonna look at all the individual parts first. I'll tell you what I would upgrade to because some of these are, I don't wanna say super old because they're not super old, but you know, there are new products coming out and this is coming out like the day of Ryzen's release, although I'll talk about that later, probably in another video if you wanna know, but let's dive into the parts first and see what's inside the machine. So the very first thing that we'll start with is the CPU inside. We have the Intel i7 6700K 4.0 quad core processor. Mine has a small overclock on it. I haven't pushed the overclock very much, but I gave it a small one. Um, so that is the processor. Obviously we have the new Kaby Lake series out, so you could get a 7700K. One thing I will say though, with Ryzen right around the corner, we've seen the R7s released or we see that those will be the first ones released. Um, those are really good processors, they're gonna be fantastic. I've even considered upgrading to that platform and switching over, but honestly, a 6700K is a great processor and it should be seeing a big price reduction very soon with the introduction of the new Ryzen platform. So if you're looking for a PC, uh, maybe a 6700K would be a good find if you can get one um, for cheap. Right now, Amazon seems to be the best price at 308 for that processor. Obviously, yes, KB Lake's newer, but really they're not that much better than the Skylake processor, so if you're looking for for a powerful processor. Um, I only have good things to say about this one. I've had absolutely no problems with it. So the 6700K, definitely a great processor. As for the cooler we have connected to that processor, we have a front mounted radiator for it and we are doing that with the Corsair H115i. Um, it's a good cooler. Um, the only thing I'll say that I have negative opinions about it are over time, the fans will start to not be as good as they could be. Um, they start to de develop a little rattle that the fan rattle, um, does. And a lot of people have reported on it. It's kind of a known issue. Um, although if you do it as a top mount, um, I had it that way for the longest time, not a single problem. I switched to front mount and then now they rattle a little bit. And it's not too bad. And it could be the case it's in, it could just be the way they're mounted to this case. Um, we'll get to the case in a second. But just one little thing. Great cooler though, other than that, keeps things very, very cool. I like the way it looks, works very well. The software with it is also very good right now. Newegg seems to have the best price on that. It's about 120 bucks if you're looking to buy that all in one um, cool. So it works. The motherboard that everything is connected to is the Asus Sabertooth Z170 SATX motherboard. Um, I got this motherboard because of the theme of my build. I use a lot of white things in my build overall. Um, I like the white and black aesthetic. That's just kind of what I was going for this time. My previous build was pretty much all black with some red accents. So I was gonna switch things up, do a lot more white and focus on that. And then with the LED kit, I can obviously do more there. But um, I really like this board. It's really, really pretty. Um, unfortunately, because it's a Z170 board, it's not really around anymore. So you can't specifically find this one. And they didn't update the Sabertooth S to the Z270 platform. Um, I told Asus I was sad about that because it's a great motherboard. It works really, really well. It handles over overclocking super well too. Um, and it's aesthetically really pretty with the digi camo white effect. So I really like this motherboard, can't specifically find it, but there's some other really great um, Asus Sabertooth uh, boards out on the market. I definitely would recommend. I love Asus's boards. Um, they're not paying me to say that. I just like their boards. I've used them for years. They've worked great, never had a problem. They're just good boards for what I've used them. So I can just speak highly of them. So that's the board inside. Um, lots of choices you could do there for new stuff too. Um, as for the memory in the machine, we have Corsair Vengeance LPX, a 32 gig kit. So four sticks at times eight gigs each stick. Um, 2133, not the fastest stuff in the world, but um, speed of memory, you could argue with people all over the internet about it. 
the speed is important, but putting in crazy fast stuff isn't actually gonna make everything so much faster. Um, there's lots of tests that can show that yes, it's quicker, but in such a minuscule way, it's not really worth the price difference. And with the price of RAM and memory just going up recently, it's crazy expensive. So you can actually get this kit right now for about 215, which really isn't terrible for 32 gigs of RAM. Um, I love this kit and a lot of people will just be like, oh, you want solid memory, no problems. It's gonna work out of the box. Usually they'll recommend the, uh, the Vengeance LPX RAM. I've been considering upgrading to some RGB stuff, although RGB I know it's super overkill, but when you can just do it for the sake of doing it, why not? And you can turn it off if you don't like it. So um, I'm thinking about getting some different RAM if I want in the future, maybe doing this and putting this into a different build. Um, but overall, really, really good memory. I like it a lot, absolutely no problems with it. And it looks pretty good. It's pretty stealth with its black casing, so nothing crazy. As for my first drive in the machine, um, the first drive I have inside is with the OS and a lot of my programs on it. That is a Samsung 850 Evo. It's a one terabyte, two and a half inch drive. Um, really, really fast, lots and lots of space on it as well for all the Adobe Suite products and, and all the other stuff I have installed to it. Very fast boot drive, um, really consistent. Um, the 850 Evo is probably one of the most sold um, SSDs on the market period. It's a good drive and it's at a good price for the most part. There's obviously cheaper stuff you could get, but it's a pretty solid price for the, rel the reliability that comes with it. Right now you can find those for about 325 everywhere for the most part um, for that drive. You get one terabyte, which is a lot. So most people, that would be enough for their machine. I have a couple more other drives because of all the content and stuff I do. So the first just spinning hard disk drive that we have, a three and a half inch, um, is a Seagate Barracuda one terabyte. Um, that drive I use specifically just to install games to, and I'm actually filling it up and I'm thinking about switching it over to a uh, solid state soon. Um, but I want the price to come down on that because this time of year, a lot of prices on computer stuff actually goes up. Some things will come down though because of some releases, but we're seeing um, hard drives and memory all just kind of rise a little bit. It's just that time of year where things kind of are in low demand for certain things. So prices rise a little bit. Although a one terabyte Seagate Barracuda is gonna run you about 50 bucks, which isn't bad. It's a really good drive too. I highly recommend it. Um, and then the other drive inside the machine is another Barracuda, but it's a three terabyte. Um, but same form factor and everything. You can get this for just under hundred bucks, about 92, you can find one. Um, the three terabyte drive that I use in my machine is where I keep all of my content, game recordings, all of the content that I use when I work for Curse or when I'm working for myself, um, just raw capture recordings, all that stuff. It fills up very, very quick. And that's where I keep all of that type of media. I keep all of my um, recordings on there. So good drive, plenty of space on it too. And I like the Seagate stuff recently. Western Digital had some problems a couple years ago. They even admitted that their uh, failure rate was higher than they wanted it. Um, and I've used Seagate since then and had had zero problems. So um, gonna stick with them for now. Um, I'll basically use anybody who's making great drives at the time. There's some research you can do and some tests that people have done on longevity of hard drives. Always be sure to check that out and see what might make the most sense. I know Hitachi actually has some very long lasting drives that have gotten good marks. Um, and there's some other ones too. So always look around and see what people are doing when it comes to the, uh, the uh, spinning hard disk drives. So uh, check that out. The video card inside my machine is by far the oldest thing in my machine. Besides those drives, you could say, I think one of them was brought over from my, from my previous computer, but the graphics card is an MSI Radeon R9 390X with eight gigs of onboard video memory. Now this came over from my last computer. I plan on upgrading. I was thinking about getting a 1080 uh, recently and the price drop coming in soon will be awesome, but that's because of the 1080 Ti. But I'm actually holding out a little bit longer to see what AMD does with the Vega architecture and their next um, video cards, probably their uh, 490. I think it'll be pretty good. There are uh, some pretty high hopes for it. And some of the early numbers that it is doing at events is really good. So with AMD's competitive pricing, I might go that way, we'll see. But it's a 390X, it's a good card. It works for the most part. Can't really buy these nowadays if you were looking to buy something comparable to this card right now. Um, for the most part, it's really close to a, 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 a 480. A 480 is really close to a 390X. There's some give and take on certain titles, but for the most part, across the board, they're very, very similar when it comes to performance. So if you were looking to copy my build or be close to this, you'd wanna pick up a 480. Um, for the most part. And uh, I like MSI's, MSI's cards. Now mine is actually white instead of red. I custom painted it and took it all apart and did that. And I've actually custom mounted it in this case. This case does not have a vertical mount, but I vertically mounted it myself, um, doing some Dremel work and some drilling and uh, mounting it in there that way. I like the way it looks. It's cool, you can see the fan spin, it's just different. Um, oh, vertical mounted GPUs just look really cool too. Um, it's a very popular movement, you could say, happening in the PC world. So. That's what I've done with mine. 
Now, as for the case that it is mounted into all of this, this is the Corsair Air 540. Um, I bought it because of its design, because it is um, all of your stuff up front and then hide all your cords in the back along with, you know, some other stuff you can hide back there too, like my light kick bo boxes back there. Hide all the wires, hide all that crap. You don't have to cable manage it quite as hardcore, which I don't. Um, which might make people mad, but it's in the back of the case. You don't see any of it, and that's where you hide your power supply as well. One of the reasons why I don't cable manage it all down is when I need to test other uh, things in a machine, this is the machine I typically use, and since I don't currently have a test bench, it's easy if not everything is uh, zip-tied down because it's just a problem to take everything in and out constantly. So don't do that in my build. I just don't. So everything looks pretty up front. So uh, I don't have to really worry about it. It's all in the back. So I like this case. There's the 740 out. There's a bunch of other cases out. I really like that are similar, like the uh, Leon Lee PC08, another really cool design, very similar, but a little bit more glass, a little bit better showing, a um, little bit higher quality, you could say, because it's metal and glass, not plastic and and like plexi panel. But overall, uh, decent case. Um, there's lots of choices for all this stuff you could put into cases. So um, that's one thing I would change in the future if I wanted to keep everything, I'd maybe swap the case. But I do like the case, it does work very well. And it has a good amount of room in it. I filled it pretty substantially, but not making it feel cluttered. So um, it, it strikes a good balance. And right now it's about $125 if you find one. So um, not a terrible deal for a lot of real estate to work with for a case overall. I like it. Now, as for the power supply inside, it is a Corsair RM850 watt, 80 plus gold certified, fully modular ATX power supply. Um, I like this power supply a lot. It's really done me no harm. I actually bought it off a friend, so I got it cheaper. It looks like you can buy it for about 160 bucks. I got mine for about half that. So, uh, and he threw in his white cables he got from Corsair as well, and I've combed them out so they look all pretty, but I got the white combs or the white cables to match the PC's kind of aesthetic and went with that. It looks, uh, I think it looks pretty sharp. I think they look really nice. Um, good power supply overall. I like the Corsair power supplies. Um, they hardly ever need to spin their fans because of just the way they work. They've always been really solid. Um, Corsair and EVGA are my go-tos for the most part on power supplies currently when I'm building machines for friends or when I'm you know, tinkering with um, builds that I just do for fun. So that's the power supply inside. Obviously we're running it all on Windows 10. You can buy Windows 10 right now for sub hundred bucks from just about everywhere. Um, if you know, that's the case. If you're still on Windows 7 and you haven't upgraded to Windows 10, um, I was reluctant to do so at first, but it's so much better. I'm very comfortable with Windows 10 now. There's still little things I don't care for, but it's still really good. I like it. Um, definitely check that out. And then as for everything that is lighting up the whole machine, we have the NZXT Hue LED kit and controller. Um, I did a video review on the Hue. Uh, NZXT contacted me and had me do a review. Um, I really, really like the way it works and the way it controls and their software program that goes with it overall. Um, I think it's super good. I think it works really well. Right now I'm just on rainbow mode because rainbow mode's generic and it's kind of neat. Um, and with all the white accents in the build, it, it works pretty well, but I can change it up to uh, all types of different settings. There's all types. I've gone over it in that video. Go check that out. Um, I switch it up all the time. Um, and if you're a CSGO player, there are some distinct CSGO settings that actually interact with the game, which is very cool. I expect more of that support in the future with this kit too. Um, and they have some badass fans that are out that I really want to put in this machine. I'd need five of them though. And I don't know if I want to buy five new fans and, and plug them all in, but they're insane. They're called the Err. It's A-E-R. I don't know why they're named that, but that's what they're called. And they plug into the kit and you could have crazy lights for days. So if you're into lights, you could totally check that out. Um, the total cost of the entire build, not counting my monitors or perifs, um, I've reviewed both of these recently. So check the channel if you want to know about the mouse or about the keyboard. Um, you can check those or even my headphones. Even those I reviewed recently too. Um, all of the build itself, if you were to add it up, roughly right now it's about two grand, which might seem like a lot, but I have a lot of hard drive in my machine that a lot of people wouldn't need, and a handful of other things you really wouldn't need, like you wouldn't need the light kit. Um, this graphics card, I have it priced at $300 in the build, at least in that price list, um, but right now you can't even buy it. So if you were to buy a uh, 480, it'd actually be cheaper than that, so you'd save some money there. So you could get it all in about the $1,600 range for the most part for all of these parts, obviously the RAM, and some of the other stuff will you know, take the prices up because of fluctuation of price recently. But if you find some of these parts on sale, like that 6700K, um, you're really not gonna be jumping for, like you're not gonna be buying something that's so old that you'll feel dated, you know, cause it's not bad. It's still on DDR4 platform. It's still Z170. It'll still work great. And you can even put it on a Z270 board too. Anyways, if you wanna just get a newer board. Um, but it's great and it should see a price drop soon. So um, there's some definitely competitive prices that could happen 
um, since Ryzen's coming out and some of this stuff is, I'm gonna put big quotes around older. It's not really older, it's just not as new, but still very powerful. So that's my personal build and rig. Hopefully you liked it or didn't, let me know in the comments. Um, it works great for me, so I'm gonna keep liking it myself. If you have any questions as well, let me know down below and I'll see all of you guys in the next video.